This is Lee Ridley. Uh, I was lucky enough to achieve two promotions with Scunfort United, but nothing compares to the joy I experience when listening to the Aryan Hour podcast. Just a heads up, this podcast contains strong language. You know the good stuff. If this isn't for you, turn off now. For the rest of you, now fucking enjoy the podcast. All right, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Iron Hour podcast. I'm Barra, and I'm joined by my usual panel, where a full ensemble today. I've got published author Max Bell. How you doing, Max? All the better for you. Excellent use of the word ensemble there. We're off to an intellectual start. Well, there's me and you propping it up and then there's the two cabbages at the bottom of my screen there. Speaking of which, Marco, how are you doing? I could bring this so down. It's unbelievable. But yeah, <laughs> um, finally back after my outing. Excuse my tartiness. Um, but yeah, not tartiness, tardiness. <laughs> it's okay. Listen, mate, you make that many gaffes, nobody's counting at this Yeah, point. I feel like I'm just, it's, I'm just, I feel like I'm just a lux at the minute, so. Oh, Christ, then we are in trouble. <laughs> Does that have interest to Scunny still favourites to win the league as per your betting app or? Oh, I, I can only see us winning. Yes, of course. <laughs> makes sense, makes a lot of sense. And the full compliment, the fourth man, the main man. The People's Princess, it's Gareth, a.k.a. Iron Army. How are you doing, buddy? Good, thank you. I believe I've got technical issues again. Maybe I should buy myself a laptop and spend a bit of money, but I'm too tight for that. Well, this is the problem. You've got hand-me-down equipment. You look like you're in a bunker of some description. Can you just, if you are safe and well, can you blink twice for the camera, please? <laughs> Okay, for those that couldn't see, there's two blinks. I think Debs is treating him well today. Um, hopefully, hopefully it's been a good day for you, Gareth. So, right, we'll kick straight off with the football. We've got two games to review this week. So, the last pod we recorded was in the middle of the Easter weekend, which means we have the Southport game and the Hereford game to look at. Now, for us, that's good news because it's six points, it's two wins. Max, kick us off with the Southport game. How did it go? Yeah, I... I've just about dried off. Um, it was absolutely carping it down in um, the Singapore tickling in the run up to the game. Um, but look, we got we got over the line. It, it wasn't gritty. Uh, sorry, it wasn't pretty. It was a bit gritty. Um, I don't think the pitch in certain areas made it easy to play passing football. Um, but but look, especially away from home, I think if you'd offered any iron fan. Before the game, 1 0, you'll get it over the line. We'd have all shaken your hand and gone, Thank you very much, let's go home. Um, you know, genuinely great scenes at the end when, when Coogan scored the winner. Um, I've gone with my little brother, um, and it was, yeah, it was just great being able to go on the road, see a scunny win, and, and, and see the good mood that everyone was in on the, uh, on the way back on the bus home. So, yeah, happy days. Do you know, I look forward to when we win games because every time we do a pod after we've won, we, we get a little window into the life of Max Bell, how he's gone to a game with a different friend or family member and how it's all roses. It's uh, it's genuinely, <laughs> I love it, mate. I really do love it. It's nice. I, I, that's and You know, I'm not taking the, the mickey here, but that is what football's all about, isn't it? That's what being, you know, a Scunthorpe fan is all about. That's what being a football fan is all about. It's building these relationships and these memories with your family, Marco. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think over previous podcasts, we've said sort of how much this club means to us. Um, we was on the brink and we was hours away from not getting Max, not having the opportunity to tell that to story um, and us having the opportunity to go to these games. So, yeah, it's massive. And what a story it was. Maybe you could publish that one. Yeah, well, I'm glad you said that and I didn't. Do you know what? That's harsh. The book is okay, <laughs> but uh, no, Southport again. Um, it's I'll say it again, we have said it previously. It's a one of them results where time with Fesk, not pretty job done. I think overall, um, we deserve the result. I mean, listening, to, I had their comms on the actual uh, stream, and um, I think their sort of even their side seem to think. If we'd have gone away with anything else but a win, it would have been slightly unfair. Um, mm. Great to see Coogan get the goal. Um, man in form <laughs> at the minute. So, yeah, really good. I, th- I think Jimmy Dean's considering playing him up top for the playoffs. <laughs> Gareth, then, did, did we deserve the win? Did we deserve the win? 
Um, well, yeah, because we scored the goal. But before that, it was it was dire. And I'll be honest, it was dire. It wasn't a good watch. It was freezing cold. It was raining. It was miserable. Um, but you know, the game changed when Danny Elliott came on for me. He just, um, you know, he was running well. He was getting on the end of balls. He was creating chances, missing chances. Um, I think it was his ball in, I believe, for Coogan um, when he scored. So, you know, he, ma he made the difference. I mean, like Max said, to get it at the end of the game as well, you know, it just made it all the more sweeter. Because, you know, it didn't look like we were going to get anything at one point, just to put, just a draw. But, you know, to get the three points at the end, happy days. And as well, it's been a while since we've seen scenes like that in the away end. You know, as a Scunny fan, obviously, Gareth, you were able to capture a lot of this on film. What did it feel like when we scored that goal? Was it reminiscent of, you know, when we was in the Football League even, when the last time we, we had a late winner away from home and that kind of atmosphere? I think whenever you score a late winner, whatever league you're in, you know, it's, it's a joyous occasion. You know, it's just that emotion, that relief, that, you know, pent-up anger that you've not scored earlier in the game, it just all comes out when it does go in right at the end. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm up for it all the time. Last-minute last minute winner, why not? You're always up for it, Gareth, aren't you? So, we've, we've come out of Southport with, I won't say spawny, but we've, we've managed to find a way to get the three points. And that takes us kindly and pretty well on to the game on Saturday. Now, I text my friend at halftime on Saturday. We were 1-0 down. I text my friend and I said, we are sleepwalking into the playoffs. And if we're not careful, we're going to end up in fourth place and we could really be up against it. Now, 45 minutes later, Max, it was a completely different story. Yeah. I, you know, people say oh, a week's a long time in, in football. Half an hour's a long time. And I, I think particularly when we... You know, when we think of the same four game, I was finding that when it was really massive because both Bracken and, and Chorley were winning. Then when we get to Saturday and Hereford, it was almost flipped in that we were able to take advantage of other results going our way, if you like. And, you know, particularly since then, get a real good lock on that, on that second place now, it looks like, in Touchwood. So, yeah, it was a really great set up moved the ball quickly, real intensity from the off, didn't take 20 minutes of, of huffing and puffing to take control of the game, scored twice in quick succession to get us to get us 2-1 off. And um I, I know it was 2-1 for a little while and Hereford had a bit of a go. But I, I don't mind that. You know, Hereford probably had to win against us to keep their playoff push alive. And I think quite a few of us on the pod have said it before, haven't we? It's, it's when sides sit in, bank a four, bank a five, make it really difficult for us. That has been when we've struggled, especially at home this season. So, you know, if a side's going to try and push against us, I, I don't mind that as much. If we threatened on the break, we threatened from open play, and, you know, four great goals, really. And again, you, you could see the look on everybody else's face when, when we went home happy because... It doesn't feel like we're sleepwalking into the playoffs anymore. Mm. Now, Gareth, Max so eloquently described the second half there and kind of the positivity that, that came from that second half. But does the first half performance concern you as we head into this final run in and, and into the playoffs, Gareth? Um, I, yes. I think we've always, throughout the season, we've always seemed to have a good half and a bad half. I don't think it's just a one-off. It happens regular where we seem to have a really poor half and then turn it around. Um, but, you know, yeah, on Saturday, it was, just, it was just so slow. It was too methodical. It was side-to-side -side passing again. We've said it before, you know, when the fans were saying it. And at halftime, there were some boos. You know, there were some boos heard. Um, but, you know, we, we made up for it in the second half. And I think, you know, it happens all too often. So I wouldn't, I'd expect to see it happen again even in the playoffs, that we have a bad half and a good half. I think that's just the way we've been playing all season. Hmm. Mark, obviously we've had two sides of the coin there. We've had the, the you know, the pretty ugly first half from Gareth there and, and the positive 
uh, atmosphere that was felt in the second half. How did you kind of interpret the game on Saturday? Hundred no, percent. Like I said, with the first half being so, like I think yours is a perfect analogy of sleepwalking. I think that's how we actually played the first half. Um, the second half, getting that early goal, same as how we need to be beginning games, in my opinion. As soon as we get that early goal, we seem to be like just dispatching of teams. Um, so the fact that we got that early second half goal, the second forward to sort of just ease everybody in the stadium. Um, and then, like I say, we could sort of take the handbrake off and really show what we're capable of. Like, like Max said, with teams coming and sitting back, I think, if anything, Saturday is a really good indication um, of the second half of what's going to come in the playoffs because mm-hmm. teams are going to have to come here and want to win. It's the playoffs. You're, you're not coming to take a point home. I mean, at best, extra time penalties and so be it, but teams are going to have to come and try and win and I think that's going to play into our favour. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking and Max will know more than I do. I'm looking at who are the full-time teams in and around the playoffs. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Max. I think, is it South Shields and Chester would be your two full-time teams? Yeah. Give yourself more credit, Barry. You were bang on. (laughs) So, with that in mind, you know, it's it's possible we might get another full-time team in, in the first game, potentially, potentially. But after that, again, if you're looking at going to extra time and pushing that game on with the squad we've got, Max, especially with Cal Roberts now kind of coming back and hitting a bit of form, you would like to think we would or should have enough in the bank, really, to to get over the line. Uh, you would like to think, and I, and I certainly would hope and then, dare I say, even, even pray for that. But at, at this stage of the season, to come and to get into the playoffs and it's one-legged do or die, I'm not massively sure there's going to be a huge difference in the size of fitness, mm-hmm. um, particularly if, if, if opponents do come to do come to the Atis Arena and try and make it easier for themselves out of possession. You know, the, the adrenaline and, and the focus and, you know, that extra yard you get when games really matter, when it's the last 20 minutes and it's 0-0, it's 1-0, it's, it's what have you. So, look, we're going to have to be ready for that. Everyone knows what this player format is like. It's a big advantage finishing second or third. The, the sides who finish fifth or sixth, it looks like we're going to play the winner. They're going to have played midweek. Um, we might come on to it later, but we might have even had an even longer rest, depending on mm. how the cost of the game then's shaping up. So there is an advantage there, but you've still got to make that advantage to tell you. You've still got to make sure that none of your defenders make a silly effort like you might do in certain key moments or as happened to us when we conceded silly goals at big moments this season. You know, I, I don't want to be looking back at the end of the playoffs with regrets. If you get beat by a better side, then sometimes there's nothing nothing you can do. But we've seen enough performances from us this season, particularly at home, to know that when we're at our best, we'll win those two games. But mm. you've still got to be at your best. Now, Gareth, the positives for me recently as I just mentioned, was Cal Roberts coming back. And I thought McAlinden has been a real difference in the last, particularly on Saturday when he came on. I thought it just took us to a whole new level. Question for you, Gareth. Do you and do you think Jimmy Dean knows what our best team is yet? Um, I think he does. I think he does know. But it's having the personnel to be fit. And um, ready, if that makes sense, you know. It's not just a yeah. case of being physically fit, but mentally fit as well. You know, they've got to be on the ball mentally, physically. But I think he does know that, you know, he's his best team, but it's just, are they all there to be played at the same time? And like you say, with Carl Roberts coming back, um, that's a massive plus. You know, you just, you just got to hope that you don't pick up any knocks, any injuries going into the playoffs. You know, you've got to look at it and you think, if we win on Saturday, do we then rest players for the playoffs? Or do we just keep them match fit going into the playoffs? You know, it's a it's a tough call for him at the end of the day. It is a tough call. And it's a do or die, live live or ride kind of call, isn't it? Because we are at that crunch point in the season and, and we're now, you know, two games away from these do or die games where if we win, we're heroes. And if we lose... 
were failures. It's it is crazy these playoffs. Now, Gareth just kind of touched there on the black game on Saturday, Marco. I wonder if we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves now looking at the playoffs because you know we do have these two league games left, and of course there is still that second place which hasn't yet been secured. Now we did have a massive result on Tuesday. Uh, with Chorley not being able to pick up a win, in fact they were they were they were beaten um, at Kings Lynn. So that was a massive swing for us because it now means because of the nineteen goal difference between us and Brackley, we effectively need just one more win. Just looking ahead to the Blythe game then on Saturday, Marco. How do you think Blythe will play, knowing they are where they are in the league, and that is one place above the relegation zone? And just goal difference, really, keeping them safe at this moment in time with us and then Brackley to play on the last game of the season. Yeah, um, I think it's a good question. I think I think we're going to play how a lot of teams are um, have done whilst we're visiting at Arena this year. Um, I think they'll be looking at the fact that when teams have come and attacked us, like we just mentioned, they've been punished. Um, so that's definitely not the way to go about it. Down there, it's fine margins. They might look at that game because those teams below them are winning many points at all um, so it might be a case of them coming trying to get the point and that might be enough for them to stay up I feel like that's probably their objective or trying to nick one on the break later on um, set pieces and everything will be vital I think they will play a full a, a game which you ex- would expect and which we've seen a lot um, at our place this season so it's, it's up to us to spray them down um, which is a nice but it's also another good test for us and an experience playing against a team of, like Max said, two banks of four, uh, maybe in a four and a five, um, and it's up to us to take it to him. Now, Max, I'm not sure I necessarily agree with Marco. I know you probably do lean more towards what Marco's saying, but personally, with the fact that they're, you know, Blythe's relegation rivals are Farsley, and Farsley have Darlington and Buxton to play, which on paper are, are far easier games than ourselves and Brackley. I didn't say we're a great team, I'm not saying that, but, you know, just on paper, we are second and Brackley are, are third. Do uh, Are you in the same camp? Do you think it's likely then that Blythe will turn up with the solid back lines um, and look to just 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 keep us at bay? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I agree with pretty much every word that Mark has said there for, for a couple of reasons. Um, Farsley, who are fourth bottom are behind Blythe, only on goal difference, like you said, um, they're away at Darlington on Saturday. I'm not convinced that's an easy game, to be honest, because Darlington only two points adrift. They've been one of the form sides in the whole division the last two months. And, you know, if I was us, I, I wouldn't fancy going to Darlington and needing something, as we quite spectacularly proved last month. Um, and, and also, if you blind, you know, their goal difference is minus eight, which no side 15 down has got better than. Blythe haven't conceded loads of goals this season. It's their defence that still kept them within the shout. I think if you're them, and particularly if you're a part-time side and you haven't got loads of time on the on the training pitch between games, don't try and reinvent the wheel. They already took three points off us by being, or at least trying to be, defensive, solid, don't make any silly mistakes. Well, and, uh, so it felt like a defeat. It felt like a defeat. Um, but that is, I would say that is their best way of getting three points is trying to nick those wins that we've seen and sometimes lose home and away um, if I was blind I would be setting up sensibly the last thing they would need going into a lot is likely to be a very crucial final day would be a morale sapping to three or four goal defeats and then I'm expecting them to be difficult to break down and hopefully um, one of the lads or um, two or three of them can come up with big moments I, I was going to let that go when you said about the three points but we got I got some stick last week for having not pulled you up so I felt obliged <laughs> to have to do so <laughs> so Gary how, I'm going to put you on the spot here how do you see the next two games going for us as we head into the playoffs what was that sorry six points three points four points Six points. Six. I'll blink twice. <laughs> um, no, I think, I think, yeah, I think Blythe will be difficult to break down. Looking at the goal difference, you know, that's their saving grace, possibly, and they probably will go for a point. But I think we've got the quality. I think we'll be able to unlock the uh, the door, as it were, 
and get get around the back of them and get, and score. And then I think you know just at Gloucester, they they're going down. They've just got pride to play for ultimately. Um, but I think I think we're capable of picking up six points and just you know getting on, scoring goals, winning games, going into the playoffs. I think that's what we need to do. Yeah, seems seems fair. Now. A little bit later on, we have quite a lot of questions from from fans and listeners, which we'd like to go over. And I think that'll probably take up a lot of our time. So I'm just kind of conscious of time. I'd like to move us on, uh, um, if I can, and look at the iron stats of the week. Now, I've got two stats here, which I kind of wanted to mention. Now, the first one was a discussional topic that we had on the last pod, Marco, when we speculated about who the last striker was who who got 20 goals for the iron. So, so the stat this week is that Danny Whitehall needs one more goal to be the first player to score 20 league goals for us since Paddy Madden in 2015-2016. So, so it is like we said, Madden was the last one. But Marco, to you, how much does that hammer home that, you know, it's been almost a decade? You know, it's been eight years since we had a legitimate striker who could put 20 goals a season. And, and remember as well, Marco, we're talking about 20 goals a season. We're not talking about 30 we're just talking about yeah. what a decent striker should return. Yeah, I mean, like I said, within that time period, let's be honest, there has been some dismal um, squads, dismal times, dismal periods. Uh, so it's hard to sort of find a gem. Uh, Scunthorpe have always been quite lucky beforehand with your, with your Billy Shaw. We've always seemed to get that goal scorer, whether it be a Sharp, your Hayes, uh, Hoopers, even like your win alls, we always seem to find that twenty goal a season striker. Um, and I mean, Paddy Madden, a massive shout out for him as well. So I saw Stockport the other day; he's still scoring now. Mm. Um, when he actually retires, like I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. He is one of the EFL's all time greats for me uh, on a goal scoring front, um, and I really enjoyed him playing for Scunthorpe. But yeah, like you said, that period from Madden leaving. Two now, obviously, Whitehall. I know it's at the National League and not at the le- levels that Madden did it, whether that be in League One, uh, top end of League One or League Two. Um, yeah, full credit to Whitehall because I think I won't be the only one to say it. A lot of he's had his, uh, he's had his dowers this season. Um, I, I think even he said well, he won't have had his best season that he's ever had. Um, and he's still, touch wood, going to manage to score 20 goals. Um, so that's credit to him. Getting that many goals isn't a fluke. He's obviously got the quality. We've said that numerous times. There's been hat tricks, whether it's from whether it's a free kick or whether it's a tap in. He's always there. So yeah, massive respect for Whitehall. Um, but yeah, like I said, it is a massive relief to have that twenty goal season striker. And let's touch wood. He's doing it in the league above next year. No, well said, Max. You are a man who loves the defensive arts, the dark arts, um, the defensive style of play. Now. Obviously, when I say that, I'm thinking of the charity game where you maliciously hack somebody <laughs> down, which was very Italian-inspired, shall I say. But this next stat is something I think would interest you, and it's that we need two more clean sheets to equal our record in the league and three more to equal our record in all competitions. So, effectively, if the next two league games um, end with us without us having conceded, we will have uh, equaled our record, and with the Hope touch wood for games between now and the end of the season because obviously the Lynx Cup doesn't count as a senior game. Uh, with four games potentially between now and the end of the season, if we have three clean sheets, then it will equal our record in all competitions. Does that excite you? The fact that we have a team this season which you know has been quite miserly. Um, well, if, if we can get three or four clean sheets, then we should be getting promoted. So that that excites me. Um, I, I mean, look, I, I, I think good quality defending has always been a, a way for sides to punch above their weight. I probably speak for quite a few score times when I say this season. I mean, it hasn't felt like we've been brilliant defensively, but the number of clean sheets probably probably begs to differ. Um, I, our record, I'm guessing... Was it the 06 07 League One title? Yeah, so so I that hasn't sent me the numbers, but I'm fairly confident it would be that 06 07 season, yes. Now, now, there, now, there is a season where I think, you know, the 25 odd years I've been watching some of, 
that's probably the one where I can't have a really good of a back last season. Didn't make mistakes. Did, you know, large periods where it just didn't look like conceding, managed the game really well. Certainly didn't make some of the mistakes I would think of that we've made this season in terms mm. of the goal at Spenny Moore, the goal at Bly, all four of the bloody goals at Darlington. Um, so it's not just about keeping clean sheets for the sake of it. It's about making sure that when the time comes, you're really doing it. You know, you've really got confidence in each other. So your back four trust your goalkeeper, your midfield trust your defenders, the crowd trusts everybody. And, and look, Blythe and Gloucester are two sides who've, who've struggled to score goals this season. But the big test will come in the playoffs, fair or worse. I think you're right there. The other attribute which I feel like we've had this season, which I can only speak anecdotally because I haven't asked Iron Stats for the figures on this, but whether they've been match-winning or, or uh, match-saving goals, I don't know. But it does feel like, particularly since the turn of the year, when maybe our form hasn't been that good, we have consistently scored late goals this calendar year. I can think of, well, there was two on Saturday. Um, there was two against Rushall, wasn't there? There was one against Altrincham, one against Southport. I feel like, you know, we are a team, now whether it's fitness or not, I don't know, Gareth, but it does feel like we're a team that can score late goals. Um, yeah, I think fitness, you know, you mentioned it there, does play a part. Um, definitely, you know, there's a lot of teams that are part-time. Um, and I think it tells in some of the games where, you know, 70 minutes they're holding their own and then they just drop off and we seem to pick up another gear. Or maybe that's because they dropped off, I don't know. And we just kept it in the same gear. But yeah, it, yeah, it's we're capable of doing it, you know. We've got the players, the personnel to do it as well. You know, if we keep banging at the door, we're creating the chances. You know, in games, we've created loads of chances, just not scored the goals. And ultimately, you know, if you come in the first minute or the ninetieth minute, they all count. So, you know, for me, I'd like to score a few in the first minute just to settle the nerves, as it were, and not leave it right till the end. But you know, we've got the personnel to do it. So, you know, and it's just told that the fitness levels as well. For me, yeah, so, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll sit with you, Gareth. So we'll move to the questions from from the fans, and we have quite a few to get through this week. I'll, I'll kick off first, Gareth, if I can stay with you. This one comes from from a friend of ours, Phil Pinder, who says, "Where do you think we will be in twelve months, league position and league?" <laughs> Easy. We in national league, and in twelve months' time. I don't think we're going to be first like Marco's um, <laughs> point. I'd, you know what? I'd be happy with mid-table just to be back in National League, just you know, just to consolidate our position, just to stay up. So anything above 20th, is it? Yeah. 23rd, 22nd, 21st. Yeah, so anything above 21st, yeah. So I'm going to stick my neck out on the line and I shall say 12 months from today, 365 days from today, we will be 16th in the National League. We should do a, we should do, we need to write this down. One year yeah. on that podcast, see who's closest. I'll tell you what, let's do it. So I'm going 16th in the National League. Marco, what do you say? 365 days from today. I've got a really bad feeling about the playoffs. <laughs> oh no. But that's that's not me. No, I'm off sick from the National League. <laughs> uh, Max. Oh, no. Three... Yeah, towards the end of the season. No, 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 no. I want to change my answer. I'm going to go ninth. Obviously, I don't feel about higher. Ninth. Ninth in National League. Okay. Max, where will we be 365 uh, days from today? That's just Jamie. If, if Marco had kept that he thought we were going to be in the playoffs, I was going to attack him for being on drugs <laughs> and, you know, share hey, your back. <laughs> uh, no, ninth is semi-respectable. Um, I think we, in 365 days' time, will be top of the National League North. Okay, Ooh. that's that's fair enough. Kick right. him. No, <laughs> and and Gareth, what was the league position we will be in the National League a year from today? I will say sixteenth. Fifteenth. Fifteenth. 15. Okay, so four, 
for the tape, <laughs> it's the 11th of April 2024. <laughs> If you're, and... if you're watching this, <laughs> um, yeah, let's see where we are a year from today. Right, Max, this next question comes from Aidan Wilkinson. There's a few questions from him, but the one for you is if we go up, would you keep Dean as manager and would we struggle in the league above? So that's if we go up. Um, if, if we go up, I, w- I would keep Dean, yes. I think. Under the circumstances, he deserves massive credit for keeping the show on the road for basically two months without payments, with massive expectations, with you know sides bouncing back. It took York five years. It took York stop on six. Um, and do I think we would struggle? I don't know. Tough to say. It, it is a difficult league. York and Kidderminster have been recently promoted into it. They have struggled, but you'd have to see the kind of signing we'd make. I, I think if we did get promoted, I think Gareth's guess of sort of 15, 16 feels rightish to me. Well, mine was 16th as well, so I'm not quite sure why you picked Gareth, but okay, how do you know? Because I like well, Gareth and I don't like you. And you hey! said, and, and because you picked on me early, I'm going to do it back. You can I just say... You late goal against Oakenham just... early on this season. I'm not, Who I'm are not... They aren't in our league. I'm not, Al, whoever it is, I'm not, I'm not trying to influence a referee here, Barry, but just remember that when it comes to the hero and moment. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting no class. Good point, well made. Just saying. <laughs> Don't let him talk to you like that, ref. No, you're right. Marco, who, again, this comes from Ado, who is the team you would less like, sorry, who is the team you would less and mostly like want to play in the playoffs? So the team at least and most likely you want to play in the, in the final. Playoffs. In the playoffs, uh, oh, yeah, in the final, yeah. Sorry, just yeah. So I probably on my own here saying a lot of those teams that I was originally quite fearful yeah. of have dropped off. Um, your Chester's, we saw Charlie midweek, um, Brack obviously lost of the weekend. I mean, this, they've all sort of showed weaknesses. Was it Brack lost of the weekend, or did they get a result in the end? Uh, I think they won actually. They did win. Just, they did win. It was it, it was doom and gloom one point in the first half. Where yeah, yeah, but yeah, none of them are in great form. But the one I fear most, um, just going off what I saw at Grantham Park at Battis Arena, um, is Boston. I thought Boston really showed an attacking threat. Um, obviously, we've got some some good players which we, we're aware of. Kelsey Moon has had a great season for them. Um, I mean, at one point, Grantham Park. They could have won that game. Um, mm. Shields have had a really good second half of the season. Um, an absolute horror show of a mid, middle season. Uh, but they started well, and I thought they were going to be the ones to that we'd sort of go toe for toe with this season, but it hasn't worked out that way. So Shields and Boston, I definitely want to avoid if possible, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of them two is in the final. So, yeah, Brackley did win on Saturday, and Brackley funnily did. enough, they John. actually beat Boston. It was Boston they beat 2-1. So. All right, I'll take you back. I don't want Brackley. No, but yeah, <laughs> no, just going off what I've actually seen, um, obviously in person, I I think Boston, I think, would be our sort of biggest challenge. I think they would be bang up for that. And I wouldn't fancy that. So mine's probably one that not many people have on their card. I really do not want to play Chester. Again, for similar reasons, just based on what I'd seen this season. Now, I know... Basically, every team in the playoffs has given us a tough game at some point, whether it be Brackley away, whether it be Shields away, whether it be Curzon home and away, Boston home and away. But for me, that performance, I know it was away, but that performance away at Chester was a real concern for me. I That was the probably the only one of two or three times this season that I thought, yikes, if we have a bad 20, 30 minutes in a big game like the playoffs, we could seriously implode. Max, which team would you least likely, least like to play in the playoff final? Um, I mean, I would use the same logic in terms of Marco in the, the, the side I've seen play against us who've been the best side this season. Um, I, I'd, I'd be fine playing Chester, I think, although I, I think they're going to miss out. Um Spenny more actually because they won their game in Hampton. I they're now into the playoffs on, on goal score ahead of Curse. Wow. Um and Boston as well. If they won their game in hand, you know, you could have 
6th, 7th, 8th and ninth all on 71 points. It's going to be really, really tight at the bottom end of the playoffs the last couple of games. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the best sign I've seen this play this season was Brackley. When, when we went there into the FA Cup, lost 3-1. I, I, look, I know we're really unlikely to play them away. Um, I am slightly heartened by the fact that we kept two clean sheets against them at home in leading cup. But we didn't score from open play. It was only a Jacob Butterfield free kick. Um, you know, when we went there, they are the the one the one side really, particularly in that second half. I actually saw they went right. We're going to get the ball down here. We're going yeah. to move it quickly, and we're going to really go at it. And it looked like we were about to hold on, and then they scored three goals in five minutes or whatever it was. Um, they're the side I would have. Most respect for, if you like, but um, they're going into the end of the playoffs in really good form. If we got them in the final, well, that's fair enough because I think we've probably been the between us. We've been the second and the third best sides in the league this season, so it's only fair you've got to beat the best. Yeah, good answer. Gareth, a cheeky one for you from James Britton, who says, would it be fair for us to go up and Grimsby to go down as it would basically give us a six-point head start next season? <laughs> the points. I don't think Grimsby are going to go down, though. Unfortunately, we're definitely going up, but I don't think Grimsby are coming down. No, maybe nice, not. Nice thought. Right. Let's let's move to some of the questions that we've had on the Facebook page. Then, so the first question, and and this has really been echoed by quite a few people, but I'll just pick Steve Dent out. He's, he's the first person who asked this question, and the question from Steve says. We need a second goalkeeper in our squad, question mark. Well, yes, I think most fans at this point would say we probably do need um, a second goalkeeper in the squad. Now, the reason being, <sighs> it's the playoffs. If if you, you, I think you probably would like to keep her on your bench because there's no second chances in the playoffs, is there? Um, now, I have spoke to somebody at the club today who has assured me that it's very likely we, we we will have a keeper. You know, we are in the market for a keeper. And the club are hopeful, in fact. I can say the club are hopeful that we will have someone in place, possibly even for the Lynx Cup game midweek next week. So I think it's something that they've they're definitely thought of, they're aware of, and they know, as we've just said there, there are no second chances in the playoffs. And it would be quite naive, I think, not to to, to go in with, with a backup keeper. And of course, that means then that, Andy Boyce can play centre back rather than playing in net, Gareth. It does, it does, but you know, he'd do a good job if he had to. Yeah, so that so Marco, this this is kind of a thought really that comes from Rob McCutcheon, and he says about five games ago I noticed a shift in the players and I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but it was from the Bishop Stortford game onwards. We seemed quicker to the ball. Uh, I don't know if it was Jimmy or Pat, the coaching setup, but I remember being worried before that, and it dawned on me that we seem to have cracked it, and it's been proven right by the fact we're likely to get second. Now, do you share the sentiments of Rob there? Do you think there's been a massive upward in, upward turn probably since what would it be that the four nil away defeat at Darlington? Yeah, um, I wouldn't necessarily say cracked it um, just yet, but regarding form, uh, I think. A massive part of that is actually getting players back in. Um, so, with a new signings of Corbett, obviously Finn Clark's back. The big one for me is Cal Roberts and Macklin, obviously coming back. These are all attacking players and players that can get the foot on the ball and give us that extra dimension. Uh, Pre Bishop Stalford, we didn't have those. Um, obviously, we, we were playing Beast and on the wing at, at points and times. And I think all these players coming back into the fold are all attackers. And I think that's why we're seeing a few more goals. Um, and us on the front foot a bit more. So I think I don't think it's any coincidence. I think that is why. Um, so I feel like Jimmy's hands were tied at one point with injuries. But yeah, definitely, definitely been an upturn. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> hopefully it continues for the playoffs. But um, yeah, goals are massive this one. And it brings confidence. And that Bishop Stratford game was a perfect time. We all said on that podcast before we need to we need to sort of use that as a confidence game. I hope we use this the Lincolnshire Cup game as the same sort of thing. Um, no disrespect to Spalding, uh, but if we can get some goals, I'll obviously punt into the team for it, for the next game. So yeah, great theory uh, thought, but yeah, I think it is due to some good attackers coming back in, specifically Roberts and McAllen. 
Uh, I'd just like to read this comment from Steve Wilkinson because I touched on it briefly there when we talked about the goalkeepers. But it was really Steve that set me up on the thought process. And he says here, you know, my opinion is that these are knockout games. You don't get a second chance. It's really important we get a reserve keeper in. So uh, to give Steve the credit, it was him that kind of set me up on that 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 thought process. And it, it did make me think about what we've said earlier in, in the season on, on this pod, which is that a good 20, 25 minutes will get you promoted in the playoffs. A bad 20, 25 minutes and it's game over. It is. Good night. Gareth, this next question comes from Paul Farman and he says, how do we make sure that the Attis Arena is rammed for the playoffs and create as much of an atmosphere as possible? Um, I think the only way to do that is by lowering ticket prices. Um, you know, like the Chester game or getting people in free tickets. But I don't think they'll do that. I think it should it should be a good crowd regardless. You know, it's an opportunity to for the fans for the town to watch the team. You know, hopefully get promoted if we get to the final, um, and that should bring people in as it is. You know, um, maybe they want to put some incentives in. Can they put incentives in for the playoffs? I don't know. I don't know how it all works. Does all the money go to Scunthorpe? Uh, I've you know I'm gonna get I'll get an answer on that. For our next pod, and I'll find out. I don't know. We've never been in this league before. We don't know. I don't know. My gut feeling would be, I just have a feeling it might be like a 45 45 10 split with with at the league getting like 10%. I'll check that. I'll have an answer for you for next week. I suppose a thought from, from Martin here, Max, a thought from Martin Maidman says, Do you think we should maybe give the corner to the away fans in the playoffs? And then we could have the home fans behind the goal. Now, I guess the problem with that would be we do have that commercial sponsorship in that corner now, don't we, Max? Um, I mean, I, I'm less bothered about that. Um, if I'm being totally honest, I, I think you could you can always move it. You can always slip the few quid. Um, I think it depends who we get. It, it's probably the, the primary concern I would have if we are, you know, even even a Chorley. I'm just talking about the league now. And Alfie to the South Shields. I think Shields have had the third highest average home attendance in the league mm. this season. That's fine, doesn't Hereford or Chester? Yeah, if he if either Chester or Boston made a made a late run, then you know, or particularly Chester or Boston, you, you'd get over a thousand. And our reaction to the prospect of a bigger away following should be, you know, give me, give me, give me, um, you know, take their money. And I would say as well that actually, and I do think this was the case with the Chester game, I think if, if people know there's going to be a big away from them, I think you get more bums on seats in the home. There's, there's, there's something about it where it really does feel like a proper game if there's a big away end, especially when at this level, and you know we've had some crowds this season, you know, how many did Curzon bring? In the 20s, um, you know, Look, if we get a Curzon or a, a Brackley and they maybe only sell, well, three figures, if le if not less, potentially, then sure, chuck them in the corner. But if we get a big crowd, we know what the financial situation has been behind the scenes at the club for quite a while. Um, I I'd have them behind the goal and I'd take their money and run. I think Gareth's doing me a share yeah. celebrate. Yeah, Gareth, do you have any thoughts on this? I think I think the the issue with the corner, I don't think there's any catering in that corner. So that's why it's not being used all season. Um, I think they have um, some problems with the catering point down that side. So, that's so what you're saying been... is, you're saying really piss the away fans off by not letting them have food <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, yeah, there is that. So genuinely, just on that, I can remember going to Lincoln in the playoff semi-final in 2003. And the only catering they had in that away is flat lemonade. And I know that the lemonade is flat because I bought some. And I'm still pissed off about it 20 years later. Oh, and we lost. Sour. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mad game, by the way, that Lincoln game. That's one of the craziest games, that away game, that I've ever been to, ever. Nathan Stanton's only goal for Scunot United. Mental. His goal to equalise and make it 3-3. Like every scrum up outfield player ran to the away end. Like honestly, it would make top five best celebrations mm. for a scrum up goal ever. I, certainly that I've seen. Um, when we when we made it three three, I would I would have 
bet my life we're going to do these now. We were all over them like a rash. Yeah. And then maybe twice and lost them. Top notch. Chucked it away and then lost 1-0 at our gaff as well, just to really sit the boot in. And the next question comes from Brad Guest. And it's actually a question for me, he says. And he asks me who, who I think our best centre-back pairing is. Now, I think he's asked me this because he knows that I have a controversial opinion on this. Now, my best centre-back pairing would be one that definitely includes Andy Boyce. Like, I honestly think we just look so much better with Andy Boyce. And to be honest, it would be, although I know Coogan scored goals lately and I'm going to get so much stick for this, but if I'd said this a month ago, it wouldn't have been half as controversial. My opinion is Evans and Boyce are our best centre-back pairing. Now, that doesn't necessarily follow that I would start those two in the next few games, but... I do think they are the best pairing we have defensively to stop us conceding goals. Marco, tell me I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. I think it's horses for courses. Um, I feel like Boyce is very similar to Evans in the fact where if it's a physical battle, a war, so to speak, you're backing them all day. But I just feel like Coogan sort of gives you that extra dimension where they can afford to make that mistake and he's he's got the sort of the legs and the physique to to sort of pull you out of trouble. Um, I don't think it's any coincidence that when he has started his last few games, we've been getting clean sheets. Um, I just feel like Boyce and Evans together, it doesn't give you the most mobility, uh, whereas Coogan does give you that extra dimension. Um, Whichever one doesn't start has been very hard done to, um, because for me, Boyce and Evans are in in the top three players of the season um, for me this year, but... Saying that, I would still start Coogan um, alongside Eva. Um, so yeah, it's very tough. You're not wrong, um, but I just I worry. I really worry um, against a Mooney or against a Pacey striker. Boyce and Evans might come unstuck. Um, that's my only worry. Well, this is why I'm not a manager because I just start Butler and Boyce and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, season tanks. Uh, right then, our next question. I'm going to ask you this one, Max. So this comes from Joe Richards, a friend of obviously Gareth's. Uh, I think he does his own YouTube videos, some some good content he creates. Now, Max, Joe says, how should the club pay tribute to John's staff and all the amazing work he's done for them over the last 50 years? Get well soon, John. It's a very good question. Um, I mean, you know, I was... Uh, I, I did go and see John in... When he, when he was at School of General, he's now, he is now back at home, but he's still got a very, very long road to go. Um, you know, he's both personally and, you know, even just from the football, John's somebody I've known and, you know, I still really enjoy his company to this day. His, his, his work, not just on School of United in terms of his statistics, you know, he spent a crazy amount of hours in the archive section of School of Library. You know, the, the work he's done has taken years. But also, as well, the work he's done chronicling people from school up in the wider area who fought and died for our country in, in World War One and World War Two is absolutely amazing. You know, people are going to be relying on the work of John Staff in 100 years, in 200 years. Um, how do the club pay tribute? Um, I would say it's not dead. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think myself, Joe, Gareth, everybody else would, would, would really wish him well um, and hopefully at some point I, I, I know the staff is really keen to get back into Granny Park and um, watch more watch more football soon if he's um, if he's got any spare copies of any of his books knocking about maybe we can get him up in a club shop raise money for a good cause I um, yeah we'll pay, we'll pay tribute to staff if I get from out how about that yeah I like that love that um Gareth, Paul Cross says, hoping for a bit of debate here, if promotion doesn't happen, do, do does the podcast team think it's been a positive season that will still set us up well for next season and make us a sustainable team as we look to achieve promotion next season? And uh, is the, and do you think the team will have to go part-time with the home crowds lessening? So there's a lot, lot to digest there, but the, the upshot is, if we don't go up, Gareth, do you think, do you think it's been a positive season? No, I think you know. I think we've come into this league thinking obviously we're going to win it as number one, but Tamworth fair play to them, consistency, 
the scene to that. But I think, you know, it's not a positive season if we stay down. Um, we've got to go up and, you know, through the playoffs. Um, it's a positive season in that we've got a club still, you know, you can look at it that way. But to not go up for me is not a positive season. No, fair enough. Max, did you have any thoughts? Yeah, I disagree. Um, I think I think it's been a positive season. You know, it looks like we're going to come second, as Gareth said, fair play to Tamworth. Um, we we were under the best ownership that we've had in more than a decade. Uh, we still have a club. We've discovered the art of winning football matches again. And you know, when we talked about where do we think we'll be in twelve months' time, you know, I actually looking particularly looking at the top of the national league. I think if we didn't go up, we justifiably be, you know, pretty decent favourites to win the league next season. It's it's only Kidderminster who look like they're going to come down from the national league, um, and I, I would fancy our chances to be right up there. I, I wouldn't say it would have been a perfect season, and you know, losing in the playoffs, playoffs is really shit, um, but. Based on the wording of the question, yeah, I, I think it would have a really gutting end, but I, I still think it's a positive season if, if we fall short in um, in the playoffs. Okay, right. Well, let's have a quick fire round. So, a lot of fans have asked us which player that are out of contract do we think we should look to retain. Now, Nick Bell has very kindly given us a graphic from Transfer Mat, which shows us the players which, according to Transfer Mat, are out of contract at the end of this season. So, I thought what we would do is name the players, go around the panel, and just simply say, without explanation, renew or release. So there's quite a lot of players to go through here. So we'll kick off first. So the way I'll go is I'll go Marco, Max, Gareth. First player, Marco, is Joe Leesley. I'm going to piss you off here. And without that, you've done me dirt, because he had my enemy sitting player. But I just want to give a shout-out to Max, because he gets a lot of flack on Twitter and Facebook or whatever. But fair play... Going out to see Staffy, an absolute club legend in hospital. There's a lot of people are right saying, oh, we, we wish him the best and stuff, and it's all for sure. And Max, he doesn't just type it or whatever, he goes. And I just want a massive shout to Max for that. Yeah, fair play. No, you, you're right there. The, like, talk is cheap, isn't it? Exactly. That's what I was trying to say. And Max actually does it, so fair play. Yeah, well done. Yeah, right, uh, so... no idea. Not a clue. <laughs> I've never seen him. What an awful start. Max, no explanation, renew or release? Renew. Gareth? Renew. Okay, the next one is Alfie Beeston. Marco? Release. Boom. Wow! Wow, Max? Renew, renew, renew. Gareth? Renew, renew from Gareth. Next up then, Ross Barrows, Marco. Release. <laughs> Max. Renew. And Gareth. Release. Release, okay. Uh, Reagan Ogle, Marco. Renew. Max. If we don't go up, someone will take them. It's irrelevant. Right, thanks for the really sticking to the format of the game here. That's great, <laughs> mate. And Gareth. Renew. Of course. Danny Elliott, renew, 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 renew. Marco? Renew. Yes, Max. Renew. Gareth? Renew, but I think you're declining it. Oh, yeah, fair play. I agree. Uh, Josh Robertson? Renew. Uh, I'd probably renew. Oh, I can't exactly, we can't explain why, but renew. Max? Release. Gareth? Yeah, right. That was another renew. If anyone says release on this one, you are immediately discharged from your duties on this podcast. Jacob Butterfield, renew. Marco? Renew. Max? Renew. Gareth? Renew. Of course. I don't know what you were playing out there, Marco. No, we'll talk just, about that some it, other time. It, it's the same as every single thing here. But there's certain implications. Things have got to be right. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, I get that. I get that. And stuff. Robertson hasn't had a minute, but obviously we want to see 
Well, yes, but I'm playing the game. Andrew Boyce, renew, offer him five years. Marco? Me renew, but I think release. Okay. Max? Reluctantly release. Oof. Gareth? I think release as well. Oh, you guys! Oh, I'm not sure I agree with that. Will Evans, renew. Marco? Renew. renew. Max? Renew, but only if the cash is right. Correct, yeah. Gareth? Um, renew. Liam McAlinden? Absolutely. I think, I think he looks so good. If we can get him tied down, yeah, renew. Renew. Max? Renew. Gareth? Was that a renew? Just silence. Renew, oh, yes. Yeah. It's a yeah. thumbs up. Friend. <laughs> uh, Tyler Denton. Release. Marco? Oh, no. I'm backing him. He can stay. Max? Release. Of course. <laughs> Gareth? That, what, that what I said earlier. Can we cut that, Gareth? <laughs> <laughs> Gareth? <laughs> Uh, uh, renew. Okay, key and scales renew. Marco renew. Max renew. Gareth renew. Michael Clunan release. Ma Marco. I think he'd be fine in a level above. I'm going renew. I think it'd suit. I think he'd Max. be better. I'd be better in that league than it would this league as daft as it sounds. Max? Mark, oh, that's confused me. Is this based on promotion or relegation? Oh, he's, he's a bag of poo. Max? Uh, Renew. Yes. Interesting. Gareth? Release. Yeah, that is a, that is a real hard that, one. Because... That, that would really split the fan base, I think. Because yeah. I think in a level above where we do need that quality on the ball, I think would suit him. Again, I'm going off as being prepared. Yeah. It's hard. There's so many, like you say, variables and permutations, as there are with a lot of those players. Like I said there about releasing Denton, but it's reliant on us getting a better option. It's, it's you know what, I mean? what left that's coming in that's better than yeah. Denton? This is my only yeah. argument. Like you said, it's all the factors are ridiculous. Um, and again, I've been harsh there on obviously, like we've all been harsh with Poise. Um, Barrow. Well, I haven't. I'd give him five years. Yeah, I know, but if it was up to you, we'd have a 60 man squad and we'd be bankrupt <laughs> again. No, um, if it was up to me, mate, we'd just have a team of centre backs. Yeah, exactly. A team we'd of Max Bells. Yeah, we'd have, we'd have Peter Clark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, I'd take Peter Clark in a heartbeat. Oh, well, <laughs> as much as I loved him, I would have loved him to play for Scumfort. Um, unfortunately, he has, his legs have a definition of gone. I do wonder if Steve Foster's still kicking about, you know. <laughs> He'd do a job, I'm telling you. They do a job. Right, I think we've I just... Done... For Steve Foster, maybe. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. I think we've just about got time for our hero, idiot and moment oh, of the week to finish us off. List. Okay, while Marco gets his list, I must remind you, we are getting close to our cut-off time here. So, if we can keep this as light as possible, let's kick off with the hero of the week. Max, who is your hero of the week? My hero of the week is, and I'm sorry I don't know his name, but he's the linesman who did the Grimsby game. You know, there was such massive chatter on Twitter saying that their goal, they had it disallowed, it was miles onside, it was costing them, and the footage from behind the goal looked really bad. But then, I think it was a Grimsby fan, fair fucks to the lad who filmed it, put it out on Twitter, magnificent decision. Definitely offside when the flip comes, the defender comes back massively too late, being a linesman, I actually think it's more difficult than being a referee. You've got so much to keep track of. You've got split seconds. You've got away fans behind your back. You get so much grief. Best decision I've seen in ages. And I think that's important because of the grief we actually gave officials last week on the pod. Um, yeah. It shows when we do get it right. No one's saying it's not a hard job, but that was really that was a really good decision. Fair play. That, that was one of the best decisions I've seen in a lot of years like it was, there was I was saying to, Ma to Max before we started this part there was so much going on in that box and as Max said before we started recording here 
that defender has run about 10 yards from an onside position to an offside position, but it was after the flick on. There's so much going on there. So, yeah, cracking decision. Gareth, who's your hero of the week? Is it making a difference? It sounds like Max is going to get the point anyway. <laughs> uh, do, do remember early on, Barrow, when Max did say he didn't like you. Just say I remember. <laughs> it has been noted. It's all there on my notepad. My hero of the week is Andy Butler for standing up to the Hereford bench. That's it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For those that don't know, uh, basically, well, maybe we'll come on to it a little bit later. Actually, maybe we can talk about that um, in the in the next it, with the idiot of the week or the moment of the week. It might be covered. Marco, who is your hero of the week? Right, I'm doubling down. Just the point. I'm, no, I don't give a point. I'm doubling down. I haven't given any points yet. I ain't said mine yet. Nah. I'm doubling down. It's going to be unpopular, but it's Jimmy Dean. Jimmy Dean, he's had a lot of critics. The form's improved. He's got his players back. We're getting clean sheets. We're scoring goals. It's not always pretty, as we saw him in the first half. We know he watches the podcast. Jimmy Dean, come on. Yeah, we're all with you for the playoffs. Take us up, and I'll make your statue. <laughs> Take us up and come Bye. on the pod. Yeah, get him on. That is, that is three absolutely banging choices, that. Right. I really want to go for Gareth because he said Andy Butler. I really want to go for Marco because <sighs> you said Jimmy Dean. I'm going to give it to, to Max on balance because it probably is the right answer. Oh, hang on. Uh, did you just flick some of these there? I do have yeah, a only two. Uh, only two. Okay. And they were both at Marco because I've got he gave them to me earlier. Okay, right. Max gets the points on this occasion. Woohoo. Max, who was your idiot of the week? So I've gone with a slightly left field one. Um, I do think they're idiots, but by God, it made me laugh. And that was a minority of Southport fans when I was getting back on the bus. Because after our last minute winner and the flare and the scenes in the away end, the Scunny, they were giving proper grief to Scunny fans as we were getting back on that bus. And honestly, I've missed it. Like, that, it added to the joy you when, when you're seeing fans of other clubs genuinely fucked off with you <laughs> after you've just burgled a last minute win and all, like, ten, all ten of them yeah exactly all, honestly th there was genuinely a number of them like walking down that road out the back of the away end and like you know swearing at women and children and I just thought I've missed this didn't get this at Persian did we no it honestly it made it sweeter but yeah my, my idiots of the week the, uh, the unhappy St. Paul massive <laughs> Gareth, who is your idiot of the week? Idiot of the week is Hereford's very own Aaron Skinner for throwing a bottle at the dugout when it all kicked off in the second half. Um, he's the guy that was substituted after 15 minutes, feigning an injury to his leg. I think he just bottled it in more ways than one. Literally, yes, of course. <laughs> and Marco, your idiot of the week. I'm Gareth here, so you might have to share the point. Um... My, my actual quote is the tool who nearly got his head kicked in by Butler. Um, mm. And I think he's been rewarded with a new contract. Um, uh, yeah. Well, on that logic, we're all level because the points go to both Gareth and Marco for Love having it. the same answer. So we're one apiece going into the second round. The th third round? The third round. Our moment of the week, Max, is. Um, I felt a bit robbed there. I, I should have gone for that. I should have gone for Skinner as well, because then I'd have got a point. Oh, here we um, go. You always throw shit out of the wind, don't you? <laughs> like, it matters. Oh, like, anyone's keeping... We're not the electorate, mate. It's fine. We're... Um, my, my moment of the week was Alfred Beeson's goal. Um, found the absolute top bins postage stamp. It was a really nice cherry on, on top of the cake. Um, I... I think Beeson's performances this season have been underrated. He's played out of position multiple games. Um, I think he's unfairly got grief. He's been, yeah, he probably made my top three player of the season. And it was, it was a really nice finish. If he can find that in a playoff game, magnificent. Sorry, did you say he's in your top three players of the season? I think he'd be number three, but yeah, I, I think he would be. 
I okay. think he works harder than people suggest. I think he's played in three different positions. He's, he's not played in three different winner. games. He's not. An, he's not a natural striker. Um, look how many appearances he's made this season. Fit. He's been in. He's been in almost every side. Um, I think he gets an unfair amount of grief. I think he's offered massive protection to the full backs, particularly when playing on the left and being out of position. I I think really underappreciated this year for me. And it was a yep. great goal. He deserved that moment. Fair enough. Gareth, your moment of the week. My moment of the week is Kyle McFadden scoring on Tuesday night and Paul Jones saving a penalty and follow up for Kings Lynn, um, which base ultimately beat Chorley and um, hopefully makes us finish second. But what, Marco, your moment of the week? Well, mine is left field. Um, I know you, mine is Cagliari. Uh, so it's no secret, I'm from Cagliari. Uh, managed to get a result against Atalanta, uh, who were beating Liverpool last time I checked. So, do we have yeah. won Atalanta have won 3-0 at Anfield tonight. There you go. So, Cagliari had win 4-5. Um, so <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's massively helped our relegation chances. Uh, Sir Claudio, King Claudio Ranieri, uh, going to keep us up before he retires. So yeah, that was my one. Really nice to to see that. Do you know what, Marco? You win because <laughs> I like a little bit of continental football. Love it. <laughs> I don't, listen, we like a bit of difference. We do. So yeah. we're drawing to an end here. We'd just like to mention again that we are having another football game on. Sunday the 19th of May. Now, that game will take place at the Attis Arena. We're playing a Yorkshire-based Everton supporters group. And, of course, we are raising money, as much money as possible, for Scunthorpe United. So, if you would like to donate to the cause, if you would like to sponsor some of the players, that's absolutely great. We're going to put information, all the information, on our social media pages and give you, you know, on the Facebook page, we're going to give you more information about that as we get closer to the event. Um, as I say, you can sponsor the players, you can just donate. And also, you can make yourself available and get down on the day to cheer us on. And we'll have buckets going around, we'll be doing collections. And if you just want to give Max some shit from the sidelines, we're okay with that. We will support you in doing that. <laughs> um, so that's it for this week's episode. And do you know what? I've really enjoyed this one, actually. It's been been one of the most analytical ones we've done i've thought so i've really enjoyed that thank you as always for listening and thank you for your support all the best up the iron up the iron